Okay, thank you guys. Uh, so the, the talk is about the functional foundations of event sources of CQRS applications. And, uh, but before I start, a little bit about myself. So I'm the author of Fun CQRS. Uh, I'm also uh, recently uh, a Lagon contributor. Uh, Lagon and, and Fun CQRS is quite similar on the persistence layer. Uh, I'm also co-founder of StrongTyped, which is a consulting company. And uh, I'm the founder and main, main organizer of the Belgium Scholar User Group. Uh, so the motivation for this talk is actually, it starts with my motivation to write Fun SecureS, why I have uh, done that. And, uh, and then I will show you uh, a little bit how I, what, what are the principles on the command side of uh, Fun SecureS, but I do believe, and that's the, the whole thing, I do believe it's part of what are the basic principles of any CQRS applications, or at least the command sign of any uh, CQRS applications. And, uh, and then we go about what is an aggregate and how to, how, what, 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 what is the impact of having effects uh, I.O. Uh, on your application and uh, for the functions that we we'll have a look into. So, you know, CQRS is about having two models, a very short introduction. So there is the write model where you send commands to it and, uh, and the query model. And uh, so if you, if you are used with ACA, you uh, see there are some uh, very similar, uh, close, uh, it's very close in principle to, to what happens in ACA. You send commands and uh, if you use ACA persistence uh, in particular, you send commands and you persist uh, some, some events. And, uh, well, oops, okay, back. And one important thing is that CQRS is not event sourcing. And CQRS is about splitting the uh, model in two, have a command and a write, uh, a command side of write, write model, and the query side, the, the read model. And event sourcing is when you persist the events. So you can have SecureS without event sourcing. You can even have uh, synchronous uh, SecureS, which is a bad idea in my opinion, but it's possible. But uh, today we'll only see the command side of it and we'll take in consideration the event sourcing part. Well, when SecureS is mixed with event sourcing. So uh, on the command side, we have that idea of command handlers and event handlers. So the command handlers, they receive command, com a command and may emit one or more events. It may also not emit an event, it can return a failure, for instance. Uh, and the event handler receives an event and it updates an aggregate. So we have two basic functions to start with. So the command handler, the event handler, and we'll start with a wrong definition, which would be, I have an aggregate, I receive a command, and I emit events. And the event handler is, I have an aggregate, I receive an event, and I give you back a new version of that aggregate. So I update my aggregate with it. So those definitions are wrong, actually, but uh, I, will use, I, I will slightly fix it so you guys get uh, the, the whole picture. Of course, having those two functions, I can, uh, I can derive a third one, which is one where I have an aggregate, I receive a command, and I give you back the events that were emitted and an updated version of that aggregate. So what is wrong here is that I'm not dealing with failure. So when I just uh, return an event, the, the, the only option that I have if I, I have to uh, reject a command is to throw an exception, which is what we don't do. Um, so I need, I need to have a type that wraps my events, and I will define it as an F. It's not yet defined, uh, actually, and it can be any type constructor that receives one, uh, that has one hole. 
a try an option, a future. I'll talk about the, the case of future in a while, it's a special one. Uh, and then my, 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 com my command handler becomes an aggregate, given an aggregate and a command, I return an f of events. The, the event handler doesn't, uh, doesn't change. It's exactly the same. And that's the, uh, the first important uh, aspect of having those two functions, is that a command handler can fail. It's uh, uh, an intent. I want to do that, but maybe it will not be possible. And the uh, event handler, it's about a fact. The event is what already happened in your system. Uh, and when you play it, when you replay it, when you apply it, it should always succeed. And that's why I don't have an F around my aggregate here on the event handler, but only uh, around the events uh, in the command handler. And of course, having those two functions, I can also derive the next one, which is exactly the same as the one before, but uh, my tuple now is wrapped uh, in an F. Uh, there is, I said that, well, the F can be something that you have many options there. So you, you, you need something that has only one hole, okay? So uh, it can be a future a try, it can be an option. In that case, you are emitting no non events. I give you an example, for instance, a uh, shopping cart uh, 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 application, the classical one for this kind of, uh, of uh, demos. Uh, if you remove an item and the item is not there, basically behind the scenes what you do is you do a find on a list of items and what, what you get when you don't find it, you get an option, you get a none. So basically you say, if I find something, I will emit an event. If I find nothing, I, I emit a none and uh, I'm, I'm either potent, you can just remove as many times you want and if the item is not there, you just not emit events. So that's one example where uh, you, have, uh, you don't have a failure, you don't have a real rejection of the command, but the command has no effect because it returns not an option of a, a sum of an event, but a none. Uh, there is also the case of identity, and uh, I will show later what identity is if, uh, for people not uh, uh, familiar with that but it's basically when I don't have a wrapper, okay? About the future case, it's a very special thing because when you talk about aggregates, an aggregate must be autonomous and it should not uh, make call to external systems because it's all about its consistency boundary and define, modeling a consistency boundary and because of that, you should not, from inside a command handler, call an external system. That would be a wrong thing to do. However, and uh, I liked uh, uh, when Conrad was talking about having context in an API, uh, so that when I built FonseQRS, I did have a situation in the beginning where for one of the projects I was working that I need to go to an external system and I need to do that from in, uh, inside my aggregate. So I need to have the data from the aggregate so I could make a decision on which extra data I had to collect from another system. So, but in general, you should never use a future uh, for a command handler. Okay? But the main, the important point here is there is an F, and that F will be defined later. But there's still something missing here. What is missing is that I don't have an aggregate in the beginning. So back to the shopping cart example, uh, at some point you don't have it. So you need to send the first command that will whether uh, initial uh, create that uh, uh, shopping cart or just you add the first item and that first item will create and add an item. So you, at some point you don't have it. So uh, the state, so what you get, it's not the aggregate, but it's an option of aggregate. So at some point you have nothing and you send the first command, it will emit the first event ever for this specific aggregate that, and that event will transform your none to some aggregate when applied. 
So now we have uh, a function, uh, functions that take, in con take into consideration the fact that you don't have, uh, you may not have an aggregate, that you are still constructing it, and the fact also that uh, you can have effects. Try option, I'll not repeat future, but just repeat it. Anyway, uh, and again, uh, the derived one. Now, uh, so what, what is that idea of aggregate? And, and is it strange that, uh, well, it's a term landed from the DDD world, where uh, the domain-driven uh, design, and the idea of an aggregate there is to, it's a uh, modeling, uh, it's a way of modeling a consistency boundary. So you define something that should, must be always consistent, so there is strict consistency uh, there, and uh, it's autonomous, and uh, it was bordered by the CQRS uh, uh, community, which is very close to the DDD community, because it, it maps correctly, it, it fits just well with the idea of a right uh, model of the command side, where you are strict. Uh, but while explaining aggregates uh, uh, in many other talks, I realized that one way of, of uh, seeing that is that an aggregate is actually the aggregation of all the past events. So if you think about, uh, I have an example uh, uh, in a while, but if you, uh, if you think about a natural number, and I have, uh, the first event will be a natural number created with value 10, for instance, and then you add uh, a number, it's added 3, and then subtracted 5, and so on. So imagine, well, if, you, if I need to decide if I can subtract something from that natural number, I need to know what is my final value. If I only have a look on the events, it's very hard to reason about. So what we do, we aggregate all the data, all the past events, and we, we, we have now a value that I can now validate it. the next command and say, okay, if I subtract five, I'm still a natural number, so it's a legal operation. So uh, the idea that an aggregate is, uh, uh, in SecureS is the aggregation of the events uh, actually bring us to the, to the, to the, to the perception that uh, an aggregate is just a fold left. Is the accumulator in a fold left. So if I consider the, that my history of events, since the first event is the history of my aggregates, I can say that when my history is empty and I apply my fold left on it, I, I, I do a fold left on it, I get a none. And if my list is not empty, I get some aggregate. And here, I, I, I don't know if from behind it's easy to, to read it, but here I redefine my, my event handler and the history, and we can see that, okay, and I, we can see that this function here just, is just a perfect one for a fold left. I start my fold left with nothing, and uh, on each iteration I apply the event on the list, and I produce a new aggregate, a sum of an aggregate. So uh, just to show that this function is just my f the, the function that will support my fold left and the aggregation of my aggregate. Now, uh, what, I, what we can take, what, what we can uh, infer more from this API? The thing is, if I have in the history, and we saw that the history is the accumulation of my events that give me a state, uh, I can say now that I can, having a, a history and my event handler, I will just select here so it's easy to see, given a history and my event handler, oops, what is that? Back, okay, better. Given a history, I can produce a state, and from my state, I'm back on my command handler function here. So I can also say that at the end of the day, I have a function from 
an existing history, I apply a command to it, and I get a new history. Well, that is actually the sense of event sourcing and secure, uh, the command side of a secure REST application. That's just the sense of it. However, this is not practical. I don't want to work with these uh, functions. That's why I need to split them. And I need to split them because, first, uh, I do need to have this event handler to be able to generate my, my, my to go from history to state, and also because I need to replay things. Um, if, you, if, you, if you don't do event sourcing, you could have only uh, a, a, f a function that 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 ignores that uh, you can have a system that ignores that function. But uh, if you do event sourcing, uh, you want to replay your event, so you do need the event handler. So the effects. Uh, so as I said, uh, you can have you can choose many types for the for your F type. So future try option and uh, the identity. It's a trick that you can do with the Scala compiler where you say uh, that identity of T is the same as T. So if I send an event, uh, I can trick the Scala compiler to believe that uh, I'm sending identity with an event instead of just giving a, a raw type, but a kind of wrap it. And so I can, using that trick, I can force the compiler to believe that I'm also wrapping my events. And, uh, but I can also have other uh, types that are not, well, by the way, FunSecure has provided those types out of the box. Uh, there is a guy from Scala C that uh, just made a contribution to FunSecure S to support validated uh, from CATS. And it's more or less uh, that what uh, you have. You have to make a type constructor that has one type that is open, that you have to define, and the error type is uh, already defined on the, uh, for, 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 your, for your validated. So why this app is important is that depending on your comment, comment you, may, uh, you may have different types to return. So here, uh, if I have a natural number, considering that uh, add command, you always send a positive integer, uh, uh, a non-negative integer, that's the best uh, uh, word, because zero is still uh, uh, a valid va value. Considering that the add is uh, always a non-negative uh, integer, that command will always succeed. I can always add a number uh, on a natural number. Also considering that we never go uh, 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 integer or uh, 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 over the max in, uh, integer value. This is just for them to pose, okay? So that command handler just use identity, while this other command handler may fail. I never know if I can divide a number and get another integer number without losing precision. So that command, I could say, this, this will give me a failure if the division, uh, if I lose precision on the division, or if uh, I try to divide by zero, for instance. So that's the, the, the reason why uh, you should have an F. Of course, when you build your own secure S uh, framework, you can choose, well, I will always use a try. That's a valid thing to do. The only, the, uh, and you say that this one will always return a su success, uh, successful uh, computation if you choose for a try. But that's the thing about first define what are the most basic functions that you can have, then defining what are the bits that you want to be able to, 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 to define later. And that's in my case, I define it as an F because I want to, to provide different types there. But uh, it's kind of up to you to, to decide how to do it. Oh, I did it again. And being opinionated about your library or code you, you, you write is all about uh, having style, have some taste uh, about 
a preferred taste on, on, on style or uh, the kind of API experience that you want to provide for yourself to start with, for the, your team members, and if you make it open source, also uh, to the uh, broader public. So um, here we have those two uh, basic functions that we defined before, but if you think about how to work, how, if I ask people to code like using those functions, it's quite boring because every time that they receive a command, they will have to pattern match the option to know if it's uh, a non or a sum. I find it very boring to code like that. So you can define that in another way. So imagine if we consider that these are the basic functions, I can also say, well, instead of providing those functions, I provide another one that is, uh, I, I, I can define other functions where I have a command and an event. And this one will cover the case where it's none, but you, when you define, you have to say, okay, I'm creating my aggregate, so I, uh, there is nothing there, I give a command, I get the events. While the other one uh, it, it will cover the sum part of it. So what, what I want to show uh, with that is, although you can define the basic foundation functions, it doesn't mean that you have to use them. Uh, you, you build your API in the way that is more sensible for you and that is easier to use. So uh, that is basically what, what I have done. Uh, it's also not like that, FunSecure is not like that, but behind the scenes, it's, uh, Behind the scenes, there, is, there, there are those functions which, at the end of the day, they become that function. But even when you code in FunSecure S, that are not the functions that you have to code yourself. Well, not explicitly. And, uh, and there is one thing, well, I didn't mention that, but uh, FunSecure S is built as such that you, uh, you have that concept of a backend which is the next slide, actually. But uh, I want to introduce that concept here now because there is one thing that we can see here that uh, uh, I hope uh, some people uh, in, the, in the room uh, can, can, can see that immediately. Um, those functions, they fit perfectly with Aka Persistence. That's exactly what, what happens there because that, that's what Aka Persistence uh, gives to you, although they give you uh, a function from any two units, what happens behind the scenes is exactly that. It's about having a command that will emit events, they will be persistent, we know that, and uh, you may create some state from that. And that state, you, you will stay there, and you receive another command, and you validate it, you persist it, and you update your state. So that's a, basically the same principle. By the way, Aka Persistence, uh, you know, in the beginning was another project that was integrated in Aka and it was called Event Sources. So it all makes sense to, 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 to understand Secure as Event Sourcing if you are a Scala developer to, to, have, uh, to use that inside Aka. So for Secure as what we have done there is make a search that I define those functions and uh, using the, the specific API from FunSecureS, and at the end I can plug, I can use the Akka backend, and I just drop my, my, my code that will run inside Akka, but I'm not coding in Akka directly. And because of that, I can also have other kinds of backends. I can have an in-memory backend, or eventuate backend, or a reactor backend, uh, or choose, you choose, you can, you can uh, find your own uh, kind of backend. So, what does the backend? And uh, I, I, I also often, often people say that you should not write a secure S framework. In the beginning, I was saying that uh, Fun Secure S was not a framework, but it was a library, trying to avoid the criticism about writing a secure S uh, framework. But I do not agree with that idea that you should not do that. And the reason that I do not agree is that there are lots of I.O. and boilerplate that you can remove that is always, always the same. What is not the same are the functions that you implement. But the mechanics behind it is always the same. You receive a command, you have to persist events, you have to update some state, and so on, and so on, and so on. So. Uh, what does a backend is 
taking commands, applying, uh, 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 manage the state of your aggregate. For instance, if you take the aggregate persistence one, what it will do is, if there is no state there, you send the first command, you create the first state. If that actor, actor is removed and you call it again, you send another message to it, what it will do for you, it will replay the existing states, uh, uh, events, bring back that aggregate to the uh, previous no uh, state, validate the command and go on. So all those things, if you write yourself, you make probably lots of mistakes that were already made by other people and fix it. And so there is no goal I, I, for me to write that again. So that's one of the reasons that I do believe that this part we should not code over and over again. So uh, I don't know about time. I think I went a little faster than I'm good because that's my last slide. So I usually uh, give well, two things. Well, you, the, the repo is in GitHub. Uh, I wrote a, a blog that is related with this talk, uh, which I explain actually the same context, but with uh, uh, some more details. And uh, the, the part two of the blog will be about being opinionated about writing uh, a DSL or an API that helps you define those, those functions. Uh, there are some trick bits there that I have went through, so I want to write and, and tell people what were the decisions that I took to make Fancy QRS what it is now. Uh, I also usually uh, give what I will be talking next, but I have no talk planned, uh, so it's summer and so it's, I think it, I will be out for a while. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, so. Strong typed font CQRS in GitHub is the library, and the presentation is on foundations, fun, uh, functional foundation CQRS event sourcing, also on GitHub. Thank you very much. Heads off to Renato for keeping up the pace, but now we have some time for some, que for some questions. So, ah, it's always the same guys. No. It should, it should give a fixed for, uh, mic to Tomer. <laughs> so thanks, uh, like. thanks, Renato, for this great talk, and uh, thanks for uh, helping me finding my hotel last night. <laughs> um, so could you please go back to slide 16? Okay, yep. so I don't fully understand the last line, or I don't fully understand why the event handler goes from an option of aggregate to event to option of aggregate. So does that mean that uh, you can more or less delete the aggregate? Well, that's the thing. That, the first time that I gave that talk, I didn't have that line. And that was a question in the public. And, it, and, and if you, and that's why I add it. So now I get a question why I add it. So that's great. Uh, <laughs> so I remove it. The thing is, FunSecureS does not support that. I don't think it's a good thing to do. No, I think it's wrong. So, yeah. 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 You better delete it again. Yeah. And, but I, I, I give you the, the and that, that's the thing. The, the functional foundations should allow that, that function because I cannot, uh, uh, if I say that the event handler is a function from state, event to state, that function, uh, uh, I, I, need, I should be able to go from some to none. Now, on the library that I wrote, I'm being there opinionated and there I decide that that's not good. So I don't give you that API. So what I will give you, it's something that you have to define when you are creating an aggregate, so you have nothing, and you get an event, and you have to give me back an aggregate, not an option of an aggregate. And the other one is, I give you an aggregate and an event, and you tell me what, how to update your aggregate, and you give me back an aggregate, not an option of an aggregate. So there is no way in FunSecureS to support this one. But conceptually, it's there. You could have an API that would, it, it will, it will be like a, a hard delete of your aggregate. So you have an event, create, you do a lot of, lot of stuff and then you delete and the event stream is still there. But the aggregate uh, state disappear. But I agree that uh, I'm, I have the same opinion and uh, if you use FunSecureS, you don't get it. Oof. <laughs> I remove it. Tomer. 
All right. Um, looking at the at the sort of signatures, function signatures that you've presented, one thing that that I keep finding is is missing is some first class concept of uh, of causality between uh, commands. So in, in a lot of systems, what you'd have is for a certain state, two commands might arrive at the same time, and you need some serialization mechanism to actually resolve which one happens before the other, or which one uh, makes the other command invalid. Yeah. And here, the, the function signatures sort of don't uh, express that in any yeah. first class way. So I'm wondering if I'm missing something, or is it just uh, a it, It's part? right. Well, the, the thing is, uh, the goal is to really show the, the, the basic functions. That part comes with what kind of API that you offer that will give you uh, this condition. So uh, what happens if I can, uh, I will open that. Uh, oh, yeah, great. Present the modes. Let's and uh, raffle. I, I promise that I will never show raffle in a conference anymore, but it just happened. Well, that's the API in FunSecure as to define the functions. As you can see here, I don't have an aggregate, and I have only the command handles where I define how I create and what I do when I, I, I have to handle my event. What, uh, what uh, I guess what, uh, from what you say is here is depending on the, my current state, that is, first I create, and then I have the, the, the function that will update. And there I have those, uh, uh, the options to say if I'm on that state, I can do that, and, and those act, do, uh, can, I can, I have that, those actions and those actions. But that is, uh, at the end of the day, you do have to validate your state to know if a command is valid or not. So if I go back here, I take, uh, yeah, here. Is that, yeah. Given some state in that function, Actually, on that part, given some state and a command, I have to decide if that command is valid according to my state. That's the basic function. But if you have to write that yourself, that's too boring. That's why uh, I, I offer this kind of API. But that's all about being uh, uh, choosing a style and being opinionated about uh, and, and decide how you want to code. You can have other kinds of APIs that does exactly the same. But at the end of the day, you have to do that, for sure. One more question? Hi. Uh, can you go back to slide 16, the one about the API decisions? Yeah. Um, I have two questions, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first one, while I understand why in the event handler below, you know how to choose the first between the first and the second uh, function. So if you have an aggregate, then you call the second. And if you don't, then you call the first. I don't understand uh, in the last two, how can you decide if you will delete the state or just update it? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's, that's the thing. If you, if you, if you, if, you, I've, if I offer you that function, you have to pattern match and take your decisions, and at some moment you pattern match on some, and you give a, a none back. If I want to, to build an API that, that remove the hurdle uh, of writing that, I have to offer you an API where you can say, you know what, when you're constructing, you, you have to define this one. When you are updating, you, give, you define this one. And if you want to delete, give me a function that has this signature. So you need to have something around, some structure where you can put the functions. And there you have to say, here I create, here I update, and here I delete. But can't you only know 
if you are to update or delete after you receive the event, like you have an aggregate, then you receive the event, and only then can you know you ha really have to have the option there, don't you? Uh, yeah, it's true, it's true. One more reason to remove that line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Only is just one more, more question. Does that mean that uh, if the foundations uh, receive an option uh, of aggregate and then uh, return an option of aggregate, does that mean that uh, you can receive an event and do nothing with the aggregate, uh, as in uh, receive an none and return an none? To? Yes, yes. You can have no ops events. Events that is something that uh, you do that because you want to register register in the in the system that that thing happen. But not necessarily you need to uh, mutate state. Yes, that's that's a legal thing. I have done that in one system. Or, or perhaps uh, a migration occurred that causes the event not to be applied anymore. For instance, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I forgot to mention that as well. Thanks. Uh, uh, and I, I, I would like to ask who was on the FunSecurs workshop. Uh, 20 so people. It was lot, quite a lot crowd. Of people. Uh, so uh, there is. I will. I will. I don't have internet. So if you go to strong type GitHub slash strong type, uh, there is also the material for the workshop. Uh, yeah. So it's basically uh, under strong type, and then you have FunSecurs, and there is FunSecurs workshop light which is the workshop uh, Luke uh, gave uh, yesterday. And, uh, and it's a good resource to, to learn and play with the, the, the versions. Uh, if you know Grow, uh, we had Petra using Grow uh, in a while uh, before me. Uh, it's a tool made by Heiko that is here that helps a lot. Thanks, Heiko. Uh, that helps a lot when you when you do workshop because you start in the beginning and you see the exercise. Say, okay, I have to do that, and then you can go to the next one and you see the solutions and so on. Um, and it will raise your code when every time that you go to the next. That's the one thing. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot, Renato. Let's close this up. Get those slides and workshop materials. Round of applause for Renato. Yeah.